welcome to Theatre Talks with Wayne. That's what I'm going to use for this playlist or this channel. Don't know what to call it, but anyway, look at the camera. <laughs> Hi. Um, I've been doing theatre for the past 12 years, but if we really go down to the nitty gritty, I've been acting since I was 15. Um, did some shows in high school and then took a really long break before going back to acting and then went to go study later part of my 20s <laughs> and now I'm a qualified actor um, done a few professional productions and now that we've got the coronavirus going on work has been has been coming in as well but anyway not the point so I've decided to actually do a recap on all of the the, the shows that I've done um, because what I do is is that the shows that I do I keep the um, the program the play pool if you will just to remind me of um, of the shows that I've done which is kind of weird because the two professional shows that I had done didn't have programs. So it looks like I need to design my own program. That's what I can do. But anyway, besides the point. So I've got... I've got... Look at this. I've got all of these. I don't want to do it by year, because then it's going to be like, you know, mundane. Mm. So, what I'm going to do is, is that for this first episode, I'm going to do the first show that I was in, and then the next episodes will be, um, will be taken from there. I'll, I'll change it up a bit. Right, I'm going to talk about um, Hotel Paradiso, A Fast by Fido and Des Valiers. <laughs> Obviously they're French, I'm sure they're French. Um, it was adapted by Peter Glenville. This show was the first show that I ever did at the Mars Theatre in Musenberg in 2008. Um, I think during that year I was doing the, the master class. Um, in screen acting and I prepared myself to do the show. I think one of the reasons why I wanted to do the show was because um, the director of this production was actually my art teacher in high school and the director of most of the shows that I did in high school. Um, so basically Hotel Paradiso is about two couples, the guy from the one couple and the woman from the other couple are bored in their marriage and they decided to have an affair and where they were going to do the affair at hotel paradiso there were a lot of people in this there was a lot of cast members in the show um what was so funny about the show is just that um i would always be books down before they announced when books were down um, I miss those days. <laughs> uh, I even got my old friend from high school to be part of the show. Um, yeah. So there, there was a lot of... Um, I was 23 at the time when I did the show. I was 23. And most of the cast members were all young. Like the daughters were all under the age of, I would say... 18? I don't know how old Robin was when she did the show. Um, yeah, so the youngsters stayed with, like, the, the under 25s would stay with um, the kids. And that's how we used to um, bond. Especially when we got into the theatre, we bonded very well. We even had a, a lift club, which was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so there are a few stories from the show that I would kind of uh, want to share and also about the friendships that I have made since then.
So I want to talk about the friendships and the stories that came behind the scenes with regards to um, Hotel Paradiso. As you can see, I'm actually on the I'm actually on the poster. So, so there was a brother and sister in the cast, and um, they had a particularly particularly uh, unique surname like mine. And um, that unique surname was literally my grandmother's maiden name. And I thought, come now, that is too, not coincidental. That surname is not common. So there has to be some sort of connection, right? <laughs> so I asked them a few questions and um, I later discovered that their grandfather <coughs> and my grandmother are cousins. So I was sharing the stage with my third cousins, third or fourth cousins. I'm not too sure what cousin number they are. Um, it was really, really interesting because when I... They're gin oh, they're gingers. <laughs> Ginger is not a bad thing. But I kind of, you could kind of see um, from the, the guy, the brother, and, the, the brother out of the brother and sister, you could see that there was some sort of resemblance to the, the unique surname's um, family tree because they were all gingers and what have you. So that was pretty interesting. Another story I want to, which is kind of like, you know, it's literally, um, yeah, it's like, it's one of those stories where it needed to happen in order for a friendship to flourish. So in the show, I played a, um, a scholar who really believes in love, but he believes in the theory of love, not the practicality of love. He only reads it in books. He doesn't really go out there searching for love. And my co-star at the time, um, uh, I don't know if I should mention names, but obviously if you've been seeing these shows at the Masters, you know who I'm talking about. But I'm just trying to prevent from saying the names of the people. Um, so, I'm going to name her Victoire, for reference. So the character's name is Victoire, and she is the French maid to one of the couple, couple's houses and um, she flirts with me and blah 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 and that's how the character development and that's how I get to the Hotel Paradiso and the whole shebang. So yeah, so um, she was the second person who auditioned for the role of Victoire. Um, at that time I was going out with somebody and it was so weird. So she got the role. That same day of the rehearse, I mean the, the audition, I saw her at Cavendish. And it was just like wherever I went, she was there. And this is the person who didn't live in my area. So the rehearsal started. Um, I kind of noticed that she struggles to keep attention because it was like having 16 tabs on a computer. And you just needed to choose one of the conversations. And I managed to keep track of what she was saying. Because she was the type of person who said something. And if there was something to explain, she would do a sidebar and explain that. And I'm thinking, when are you going to tell me the story? But anyway. So yeah, so... Um, I would say we were friends and all that. And then the one time... <laughs> The one time we were going to rehearsal in our in our uh, carpool, and um, I think she was feeling down, so I gave her advice, and then I gave her advice again when we got to the theatre. So um, the the stage manager at the time said that we can walk the stage, and now uh, walking the stage is allowing your character to get the feel of where you need to be on stage. And I said to her, 
You just need to relax and just concentrate on your character. And I think, first of all, I've got her on a bad day. And secondly, she actually studied to be an actress. I, at that time, I did screen acting. I didn't know the fundamentals of acting by the time I got to college. And, um, she... <laughs> she let her rip. Um, shoo. <laughs> After she was done, there was nothing left for me to do besides just wanting to die. I didn't want to continue acting that, that day. And what made it so much worse is that the, the brother and sister who I'm related to witnessed the whole thing. And they tried to hide because they didn't want to make it too awkward. And on top of that, we have a, a seductive scene. So I was pissed off being belittled before going on to stage. So we go on stage and we do the scene. And I went to the prompt, the prompter that we had for the for the show. We don't normally have prompters. It's depending on the director if he wants to have a prompter. Um, I choose not to have a prompter during the run of the show, as it's a security blanket, and I don't want to have a security blanket because I'm not wanting to um, count on someone on stage who might not be following my lines. But anyway. So I went to the prompt and asked, did you notice anything different in that scene? And he says, there's a lot of passion, you know? So I was kind of happy that my, my content for the actress was, was not, um, was not seen. So it worked with the scene itself. And yeah, what else happened in that scene? So <laughs> I'm finding myself um, actually finding new stories. So in the end part of the, the uh, of the show, there is obviously a confrontation of the whole scenario that has been going on. So there is actually a policeman who's coming to investigate. Um, actually, should have done some sort of research as to why he was. I'm not too sure if adultery was a crime at that time. Good to know. So, um, this particular actor was always to himself. During rehearsals, uh, when we were at, um, at the theatre itself, he was always to himself and he was always with his mind. So, I never really got to know who he was as a person. And um, I discovered that he was the type of actor that if you do not give him his cue, word for word, he doesn't respond. So he had no capabilities of improvising a scene if anything had to happen. So he goes on stage. I'm the next one to go on stage after him, but I have to wait for my cue. <laughs> so no one gave him his cue and he didn't know where he was in the script and he left the set. So he left the stage and luckily I stepped away from the door because he barred the door open. I knew my lines, I knew my lines. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I could hear one of the actresses trying to feed him his lines and all that. And then they had to improvise the whole scene because the... the <laughs> <laughs> the detective or the policeman is supposed to draw the story. I mean, he is the catalyst at that time for everything to come together. So I was like, I don't know what to do. I can't go on because I have to wait until the detective says something. And if I go on, it doesn't make sense. So I was waiting for something to happen. Luckily, the stage manager managed to, managed to get him to... Um, to, to oh, flip man, talk. <laughs> Managed to convince him to go back on stage, which he actually did. And uh, the show went on. Oh, there's another one. Jeez. Um, I, I, I'm not really good when it comes to, to improvisation, in a sense. Or at 
that time, I didn't know what improvisation was until I went to go study um, theatre. So, in the scene, yes, it was the scene after I come from the Hotel Paradiso. So I climbed through the window and I speak to my uncle, who is my guardian at the time. And he knows that, well, his character knows <laughs> that I haven't been at home and he wants to know where I was. And I think it was the opening night for this show that um, this actually happened. I came onto the stage, climbed through the window, came, came onto the stage, and I looked at him, and I looked at the, into his eyes, and I saw absolutely nothing. He did not know his lines. And I'm like, we've got dialogue together. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Rap! And um, I did should try and find if I've actually got that script somewhere. So he's obviously supposed to ask me, interrogate me where I have been all this time. And I'm supposed to respond. And because he had nothing, he wasn't giving me anything. So I had to create the whole dialogue into a monologue. Telling him like, oh, don't worry about me. I was over here and I was over there and I was with this person. Uh, don't worry about telling aunt, whatever, whatever. And I went on a tangent. And all he did was like, you know, Mm, yes, mm, that sort of thing. So <laughs> that's what I like about live theatre. It's like sometimes the audiences don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, so that was 2008. Yeah, 2008. So that was 12 years ago. That was my very first show for my theatre. If you want to learn more stories about my escapades on the stage, subscribe. <laughs>